Hello again. It's all about the coronavirus pandemic it is now by the UN. Look at the front page of all our papers. Coronavirus, coronavirus. Premier League suspended April with six clubs left in state of isolation. Wouldn't it be funny if the title was taken away from Liverpool after 30 years? Not for Liverpool supporters, obviously. Okay. But uh, yeah, it's all happening, right? What are the other stories? Now we talked about Super Tuesday being another story, American politics. Politics is up and running. And in Ireland, right, one of the stories you should be focusing on is the idea of government formation. What is happening happening? We had the we had the election in February and we still have no government. When we will turn on our TVs at night, in comes Leo Varadkar, the Taoiseach who lost the election. In comes Simon Harris, the Minister of Health. We lost the election because we have no other form of government at the moment under our constitution, the constitution written in 1927, means that we don't have another government until this government resigns. In other words, Dal Aaron needs to vote for a new Taoiseach. Right? The murmurings are around Leinster House that it's going to be Fianna Fáil and Fianna Gael and the Greens, until the Greens said, no, we're not interested in that. We want a national government to deal with the crisis. Okay? So, this is all happening now, and uh, in the background, as things go on, we need a government in this situation. It could be the worst possible time not to have a government. That's not our story today. Our story today, we looked at Super Tuesday, is what's known as the cash for ash scandal. We've just been doing how difficult it is for the Northern Ireland executive to function. Sinn Féin and the DUP sitting down together mortal enemies. Arlene Foster, the first minister, when she was a schoolgirl going to school, the IRA planted a bomb on her bus. So she has lived through this sort of situation. Her father was there. They, they attempted to kill her father. Michelle O'Neill again persecuted and has a relative killed by the Wales paramilitaries now. They are working together. That's the, pow that's the, that's the power of power sharing. Now you might remember that when I was doing power sharing, and I hope you remember because it was only the other day, that we were doing power sharing executive. We were talking about the power sharing executive and we were talking about how it got up and running back in 1999. And it ran from 1999 and then it fell apart because the two parties couldn't agree. It fell apart for a number of years and then famously Ian Paisley and Martin McGuinness went into first and deputy first minister. And that lasted and continued to work between the DUP and Sinn Féin for so many years with, first of all, Ian Paisley, then Peter Robinson, and then Arlene Foster, who's uh, in our story today, okay? Uh, she became leader of the DUP, and she worked with Martin, Martin Guinness. When in 2017, Martin McGuinness said Sinn Féin were withdrawing from the power sharing executive because of the cash for ash scandal. Now I'm going to explain what the cash for ash scandal is and then you're going to do some work on it. The cash for ash scandal report inquiry was out today. The reason why there was no Northern Ireland executive from 2017 until last month, no two months ago, January 2020, was because of the cash for ash scandal. So this caused the collapse of the power sharing executive from 2017. It was soon forgotten with Brexit, with all the elections that took place, with all the drama that went on. But the report and the inquiry was out today. Here's our Irish Times, the paper of note. It's nine degrees in Dublin. It's the middle of March. Not only do we have coronavirus, we have bad weather. Cash for ash for fines, no evidence of corrupt or malicious activity. The minister at the time of the cash for ash crisis was Arlene Foster. When we're looking, of course, at Northern politics, we're also looking at different newspapers. The Irish News. RHI report, that's what it's called. Totally unacceptable behaviour from Arlene Foster's former SPAD, Andrew Crawford. What's a SPAD? A SPAD.
bad special advisor. Special advisor. Doesn't even sound nice, does it? The Belfast Telegraph. RHI acquired funds, no evidence of corruption, but criticised behaviour of Stormont ministers and special advisors, SPADs. Okay? The Belfast Telegraph. If you don't like reading newspapers, there's always radio reports. Okay, let's go to the Cash for Ash scandal. BBC Four. Listen. Okay. Sorry, it's not BBC Four, it's Radio Four, isn't it? BBC Radio Four. There's also a channel called BBC Four. These are your four sources. And you're going to use those four sources to write a report on the Cash for Ash scandal. Cash for Ash, that's not really what it's called. That's what it became known as. What is it so? Let's go back to our Irish Times and find out. This is how we find out things. Here's our name, Foster. It's called the Renewable Heat Incentive Scheme. Should never have been adopted. The chairman of the inquiry of the so-called Cash for Ash scheme. So that's what it became known as in the media. Cash for Ash, the Renewable Heat Incentive Scheme. Sir Patrick Cochrane has ruled in his inquiry report published on Friday afternoon. Today, today. Okay. While da quite damning on how the scheme was run, Sir Patrick found no evidence of corruption, although there were examples of unacceptable behaviour. No evidence of corruption. That's the line we want. That means Arlene Foster is the heat's offer. Pardon the pun. But she's got away with it. Okay. He was critical of First Minister. Arlene Foster. Arlene Foster, you see, wasn't the First Minister at the time. She was the Minister in charge at the time. She was given incorrect information by her officials about the scheme. So they're blaming the officials. Three years and two months after an inquiry into the controversial scheme was ordered, Sir Patrick, in his detailed report, found that the scheme was novel, technically complex, and potentially volatile. Volatile, sorry. He said it was highly risky. Yet the risks were not sufficiently understood by all those who should understand them within Northern Ireland government, either at the outset or at any time with the rise of the scheme. We still don't have a clue what it is. This is setting the scheme, what's this today? When we go down a bit, this is what we have to delve into the source. Okay? So those of you who only read headlines and draw conclusions of them, you don't really know what you're talking about unless you get in there. The scheme was designed to encourage firms, business and farmers to use eco-friendly wood-burning boilers. But unlike the scheme in England and Wales, there was no cap on subsidies. This said for every one pound users spent on green heating systems, they got one hundred and six one pound sixty in subsidies. It was a scam, in other words. It seems like it was a scam. It was news by the North Department of Enterprise, Trade and Investment in 2012 when First Minister Arlene Foster was its minister. That's what links her to the crisis. Okay. Two two thousand applicants were approved for the scheme. Then there was 984 applications in three months from September to November after officials announced they were co correcting the system but before that change took effect. This raised the question whether it was political pressure to extend the lifetime and where that pressure came from. In other words, this could be seen as a scheme by businesses to make money from the state. Okay, And so this is corruption and uh, corruption has to be dealt with. It was the first of such cases to hit the Northern Ireland executive. Look, it's an ad. Uh, notwithstanding the scheme, Sir Patrick found that there was no corruption or malicious activity involved by ministers, officials and special advisors. So, what happened then? Corrupt or malicious activity in the part of officials, this is finding it was not the case, went wrong. Now, when the, when the story blew up in 2015 and 2016, the first Deputy First Minister, Martin McGuinness, wanted an inquiry, and Sinn Féin said, we want an inquiry into this practice because we think Arlene Foster was involved, or we think there was political involvement in this, 
and we want to launch an inquiry. The DUP says you're not getting an inquiry. Sinn Féin said we want an inquiry. The DUP says you're not getting an inquiry. And to and fro, and to and fro. And Martin McGuinness then said, we are pulling out of government unless we get an inquiry. We, what we want is an inquiry and we want Arlene Foster, we did, they didn't want her to resign, they wanted her to step aside, and we, if she stepped aside from her position of uh, power, while the inquiry took place. The unionists said no, and this resulted in the election of 2017 for the MLA, that groundbreaking election, because at the same time Brexit was happening. Okay. Uh, and now the report is out, and it seems to exonerate Arlene Foster, but condemn her special advisers at that particular time. So this is a big, big story in Northern Ireland today, okay, and there we have Leo and Donald, they look like they're praying, don't they? This is the new handshake. So, that's what I want you to do, this is what I want you to do, you look at these four sources, okay, I'm going to put a list of questions on the board, and I want you to do the questions, okay. Isn't modern technology brilliant, the way we can reach you in your homes with homework? Uh, and, uh, give you this information. So here's the questions, I'm going to write them up here on the board and uh, we'll leave them there for a few minutes so you can take them down. The cash 